starting in 5 seconds. The learned solicitor journal submitted that if the decision in Rajendra Singh Rana's case which inter alia dealt with the question relating to the speaker's powers to decide a question in respect of paragraph 4 of the 10th schedule independent of any application under paragraph 6 thereof is to be made applicable in the facts of this case the same would be contrary to the decision of this court in Raja Shop Factory vs S.P. Sharma. The learned solicitor journal also made special reference to the decision of this court in Mayavati vs Markandachand and others wherein it was inter alia held that if the order of the speaker disqualifying a member was to be set aside, the matter had to go back to the speaker for a fresh decision since it was not the function of this court to substitute itself in place of the speaker and decide the question which had arisen in the case. In addition to his aforesaid submissions, the learned solicitor journal also submitted that various substantial questions of law in regard to the interpretation of the constitution had arisen in the facts of the present case namely whether paragraph 4 of the 10th schedule to the constitution reads as a whole contemplates that when at least two-thirds of the members of the legislature party agree to a merger between one political party and another only then there is a deemed merger of one original political party with another whether in view of the difference in language between paragraphs 3 and 4 of the 10th schedule a deemed merger is the only thing to be looked at as opposed to a spirit which must be in an original political party cumulatively with a group consisting of not less than one third of the members of the legislature party whether post merger those who do not accept the merger are subject to the anti-defection law prescribed in the 10th schedule whether there is a conflict between the five judge benches in Rajendra Singh Rana versus Swami Prashad Maurya as against Supreme Court Advocate on Record Association case SCC 409 what is the status of an unattached member in either house of parliament or in the state legislature whether in view of article 212 speaker is subject to the jurisdiction of court as such according to the learned solicitor journal the aforesaid questions which involved interpretation of the constitution were required to be decided by a bench of not less than five judges in view of the constitutional mandate 
in Article 145 of the Constitution before a final decision was taken in these appeals. Appearing for Shri Kuldeep Bisnoi, the respondent number one in the appeals preferred by the Speaker Haryana Vidhan Sabha and the five MLAs against whom disqualification proceedings were pending, Mr. N. Gupta Learned Senior Advocate at the very threshold of his arguments submitted that this was a case which clearly demonstrated how the process of law was being misapplied and misused by the Speaker of the Haryana Vidhan Sabha so as to defeat the very purpose and objective of the anti-defection law as contained in the 10th schedule to the Constitution. Mr. Gupta emphasized in great detail the manner in which the Speaker had deferred the hearing of the disqualification petitions filed by the respondent number one against the five MLAs on one pretext or the other despite the fact that the applications for disqualification under paragraph 4 of the 10th schedule to the constitution had been made as far back as on 9th December 2009. Mr. Gupta submitted that till today the said disqualification applications are pending decision before the speaker and since such delay in the disqualification proceedings was against the very grain and object of the 10th schedule to the constitution the division bench of the high court had no other option but to pass appropriate orders by invoking jurisdiction under order 41 rule 33 of the code of civil procedure in effect the entire burden of mr gupta's submissions was directed against the prejudice caused to the respondent number one on account of the inaction on the part of the speaker in disposing of the pending disqualification petitions within a reasonable time. Mr. Gupta sought to justify the impugned order passed by the division bench of the High Court on the ground that on account of deliberate delay on the part of the speaker in allowing the five dissident MLAs from continuing to function as members of the House despite their violation, the High Court in exercise of its appellate powers under Order 41 gave interim direction so as to ensure that the petitioner before the speaker was non-suited on account hence the speaker not to delay the disqualification of the said five MLAs. Stop.